Oh my gosh, I don't think I could look more like I belong in the Nigeria national team right now. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. So as you guys know, on the weekend we had the big charity match, the completion of the trilogy, Sidemen FC versus YouTube All-Stars, and you've already seen countless reaction videos. But what I'm gonna be doing today is showing you my highlights, like things that I was really pleased with and impressed with in the game, and then some of the things that you missed because for some reason this year, our camera ops weren't great. No, no disrespect to you, I mean, thank you for doing the job, but I mean, we had replays going on in the middle of live action, so the guys at home actually missed a lot of important and critical moments that should have been seen. Luckily for some of you guys, we had some amazing members in the crowd who had their cameras ready, and they captured those moments. So I'm gonna show you some of those in this video, but mainly we're gonna look at my highlights because everyone's done their own individual highlights. I don't wanna be encroaching too much on their territory. I'm talking too much, let's get into the video. So we start off as normal, we have your walkouts, both teams walking out side by side, there's your boy Tope Chisel, and uh, yeah, typical of your of your football game. You have the squad photo as well. Whole squad looking solid. Now, on the left side, you will see Adapt, Rascum, and Keem, and then Lachlan as well next to Simon. They are the four new additions, them, and of course, Pointless Blog, who's on the right next to Harry. But those four are the four that have come from other countries to come and play in this game and don't have much football experience. So props to them for coming down to come and perform in front of this crowd, as well as all of you guys who are watching at home. And then once we get past the formalities, it's game time. So we start off with a throw early on and Simon here is yelling at me to run. Now I've said to myself, this year I don't wanna run because these pitches take so much out of me. They're not like your Sunday league pitch, which is all cramped into like a small space. These are big ass pitches, man. Like the guys who run on these pitches week in, week out are very, very fit people. And I've found that previously when I play on these pitches after about 60, 70 minutes, my legs start cramping up really bad. So I was like, I'm gonna take it easy this year. 30 seconds in and Simon's already got me doing this. Look at this. Sprinting past Will and he tries to block me off. I get past him. Joe Sugg does well to keep up with me. I chop past him, play it to Vic, but he's not quite switched on yet. He's not as alert, couldn't get his feet in the right place. But you have to give props to him for making the right run. These are signs of things that he wouldn't have done in the previous two years. So he's definitely improved already. Here you go, you see me sprinting and look at Vic bursting a gut to get into the right position. I actually love that. Watching that back is actually incredible. Well done, Vic. Then we have a mistake from Will and E. Simon pounces, takes it away from Joe Sugg. And it's a solid finish. Maybe Hugh Wizzy could have shifted his feet a bit more, but there you get Simon's classic straight arm celebration. And then the Fortnite thing. Do you know what? I clocked. Vic spends way too long doing the celebration. He's enjoying that way too much. Relax, Vic. But no, at the point that goal went in, like my nerves were settled. I was like, all right, cool. I'm not too fussed what happens in the rest of this game. I don't mind losing. Of course, I don't want to lose, but I don't mind. We've scored. It's better than last year already. Who is at my door? And Manny's FaceTiming me. Oh, it just gets <sighs> Well, you can thank Manny for interrupting the video. Now here we got a nice bit of play from the YouTube All-Stars, popping it about with one and two touch stuff. Now people have made the argument that the teams were unbalanced. And I would say the only thing that we really did was weaken the defenses to make sure that goals were scored on both ends. And although the YouTube All-Stars only managed one goal in this game, they had plenty of chances to get more like it wasn't like all the chances were with sidemen and they had none like both defenses were weak enough for goals to be scored on both ends but on the day it just turned out that we were a bit more clinical but like i said here's a nice pass and move from the youtube all-stars this is actually a really nice pass from will any i don't remember seeing that in the game but he pops it to chris and then chris steps away from jj a little bit of improvised skill there <laughs> gets it through to king batch but it's a good challenge there from Ethan, Josh clears, and then Rice clears. And now look at Vic, look at my boy Vic. Look how he accelerates away, gets his head up, and plays a good pass to Simon. Simon tries to whip it into me, but the cross isn't that great, and Hugh Wizzy collects. But can you see the improvement on Vic? Basically, this video is just gonna be me bigging up Vic. I'm so proud of how far he's come. Now here we got my boy Bez showing you how to defend. He puts in a good challenge on King Batch there, and then here at the front post, clearing the first corner, and then again for the second one, winning the header. You can tell he's been doing some Sunday League this year. He's played defense for his Sunday League team this year, and you can see the improvement. And then you got this fantastic switched through ball from Simon. You got me running. I don't think I'm running at full speed there, but Jay comes across like a rocket. I did not see him. I only saw Joe Sugg initially, and I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna just slot this back to JJ. Boom, out of nowhere. 
Jay comes steaming in. Fantastic pace on them and a great challenge. You know what? I'd like to have him and Romero on my team. Like, there's not going to be another Sidemen FC YouTube All Star charity match. But like, I'm just, I'm just picturing a team with myself, Simon, Manny, Chris MD, Charlie Morley, the TGF boys who actually played really well in this game. Fair play to them. And it looks dangerous. Imagine Chuck JJ in the mix with that physicality now. That's looking dangerous already. And I could add more. But who would a team like that play against? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Anyway, you got me whipping in the corner here. This is what I'm saying about the camera ops. But they haven't followed the corner. JJ tried the scorpion kick. I put the ball back in the box. It's deflected slightly. Bubbles about a bit. JJ miss kicks. Confusion with the headers. Vic gets a foot on it. And then Will and E puts it back out. I try to play outside of the boot ball to Simon. He can't control it and the move breaks down. Now here we got Chris who was their danger man. He was the man of the match on their side 100%. He played the ball out to DJ Mario. And this is a lovely bit of skill from him. Look at this. Sizes up Josh. But Josh does well to hold his own. Get the ball back and get it clear. Very well defended, Josh. And then we got Chris again, not giving it up, dropping Alfie with that. So let's get a replay on that, please. I'm sorry, Alfie. Look at that step over. Oh, gets a good pass through to DJ Mario. He drops the shoulder, pops it to Batch, and then I'm there sweeping up, taking it away from Rice. And he's making a run. He's putting effort in. It's a lovely one too, actually, from Simon. And then I play it through to Vic. Look at the acceleration. He even tries to get across his man straight away, which is what myself and Simon had told him previously. Like, strikers in general, what you want to do is you want to get across the defender so they can't get back at you. Here, Movlogs actually does really well to get back and steal the ball, so well played to him. But you see the improvement in Vic. You see what I'm talking about? I'm just going to be a proud dad in this video, I'm telling you. Now, here we have Mr. Consistent, Rotashaw, one of the most consistent performers in all three channels charity matches, dropping Freezy with the little feint there. Let's get a replay on that as well. But Freezy's coming in, bang! Harry drops him and then he even gives him a little look back, the little Bill Cosby thing. Like very composed from him, he's done well there. And then here we have some more good defending from Harry. He takes it off his man, Ramel this time, plays it down the line, Rice controls it. He's trying to do bits, can't get past Freezy. I take it away from Freezy and give it back to Rice. Now you have to give props to Rice. He's never played football before. From his performance, you can tell he's not too clued up on the rules, but he gave it his all and that's all you can ask of him. Here you have him steaming away with the ball, steps away from one challenge, steps away from the next one, and then Will and E comes in with that. And look, Rice has definitely been watching Jay because he's rolling around on the ground <laughs> but it is a very nasty tackle when you see it again in the replay oh that is so high up his shin oh my gosh oh my gosh cynical here you got harry and chris md probably your most two consistent performers across the three games like i said and then lux plays a lovely ball over to batch who's got some mad acceleration i'd love to see who'd win in a foot race out of me and batch but charlie morley sweeps up ramel with a nice little flick Freezy plays it back to him. Then Ramel loses out to Adapt, who also put in a very solid shift. For someone who doesn't play football, he was putting himself into the tackles and winning the ball and putting himself about. And that's all you can ask of people at this level, I guess. But here, I come away with the ball after that attack breaks down. Sweeping it up, spot Simon in a gap, try and play it through, and it just about gets through. Jay probably should clean it up. But here you have Simon stepping away from Will and Jay, getting his head up, finding JJ with the pass. He takes a touch out of his feet and it's a good solid shot. Keeper, once again, should probably do better, maybe shift in the feet and make the dive. But we got the goal. I'm not complaining. 2-0, I'm calm. I am so calm. Now, here we have Alfie running and closing his man down. DJ Mario steps away from him and away from Josh and then plays a pass to uh, King Batch. But Josh comes back and makes a good recovery tackle. The ball, however, nearly broke to Chris. And man like Charlie Morley, who had a fantastic game, one of the best performers on the pitch from his goal line, he got a hand there and made sure that Chris MD couldn't score. Solid performance from him. Here you have Chris again, playing a ball through to Batch. There's that acceleration. Charlie hesitated and oh my, this is what I'm saying. They had chances. They had chances, but they just weren't clinical on the day. And you could say the same for us last year. Like we had chances, but we weren't clinical enough. Here you got Simon. Breaking through, playing the ball through to Rice, who held his run, but the first touch let him down. Really unlucky for him there. You can see the frustration in his face here. He's like, fudge. That's what he said, he said fudge. 15 minutes gone and Simon's picking a pass for Vic. Look at the determination. Both him and Lachlan steaming for to get it. They were never gonna get it, 
but the effort is what we like to see. Once again, Simon picking the ball up from deep, this time popping it to me. I play that one-two with him, giving them the return pass, and then he tries to get away from Will. It's a good challenge from Will this time. He actually gets the ball. Here you got a lovely reverse ball from Lachlan. Vic has bent his run perfectly. He's mastered the offside trap but it's a good recovery tackle from Gibb there. And then from the resulting corner, JJ leaping like a salmon and hitting the post with a fantastic header. He kept it down, the direction was fantastic. The jump was actually pretty incredible. But if you watch JJ's old videos and like the old Sidemen football videos, you would know that before, he had no clue how to head the ball. This is something that's taken years and years of practice. And right there, it nearly came good. Hitting the post, very unlucky for him. He could have had a hat trick. They're coming off the back of some pressure from Manny. Joe Sub gives the ball away to his good friend, Alfie Days, who comes so close to lobbing Hugh Wizzy, like so close, but the bounce was unkind to him. And so that chance went a begging. But if he had scored that, I would have just subbed myself off. I'm pretty sure I would have subbed myself off. Now we have Manny with the ball and he spotted Vic in space. Now look at this from Vic. I did not notice this at the time of the game. He absolutely sent Deji. Pause that. He absolutely sent Deji with that turn. Let's, let's get a replay on that, please. Look, gets the ball under control, gets it out of his feet and then cuts back onto his right foot. Let's not talk about the shot because it's a bit like, mm. but the skill, Deji, you need to apologize to Vic for letting him make it look so easy. Apologize. Now we have Josh with a little Miss kick, giving it away to Chris, the last person you want to give the ball away to. But he chases back to put him under pressure and make the pass a little bit inaccurate and then unable to sweep up and deal with that move. A couple minutes later, we have Manny finding myself on this right-hand side of a pass. I take it away from Deji. A little clash of knees, but we carry on playing. Get it back to Manny and this dude just glides across the pitch. Look at that, that skill right there. I'm gonna show you that again. Remember this skill, that little step, that right there. That is dangerous. If you can master that skill, young ballers, if you master that skill, you will create so much space for yourself. That's how Manny created this little gap for himself to drive into there and Lux, but Lux gets back, puts him under pressure, and then Willany comes in with a good tackle. Two minutes later though, Manny's got the ball again, shows Deji to the weight room, go get, go get on the weight stage, and then you see the step again, ready? Bang, there. Look how much space it created, and look at Gibbs' ankles. Let's get a replay on that, please. Look at Gibbs' ankles go. Oh, I'm sorry, Gib. Creates the space, tries to find Vic in the box. He can't get his feet right in time, and he puts it wide. But once again, getting in the right position, if he had a better technical ability, Vic could be a decent striker. Gib, I love you, but I've got to show you this one more time. This step, bang, right there. Classic JJ Okocha step. <laughs> That's the same side where I dropped him with a skill last year. Oh, Gib. Now we have JJ popping it into myself. I step away from Steven Tries and then try and accelerate with it. But the thing with these pitches is it's so easy to push the ball too far because you see so much space and you're like, yeah, I can do it. But then you can't. And that's why I'm not pro. Well, that's one of the many reasons I'm not pro. <laughs> We're about to watch one of my favorite moments of this game. Vic Star versus Ramel Henry. Let's see it. Boom, weights room and look at the roll. Someone edit him into the little wee bowling animation thing, please, because my man went. Look at him, he's like, what the hell? What, what, where's the penalty? Vic, it's, it's shoulder to shoulder, mate. Oh, look, there it is. First roll, and now he's James Bond, and now he's a fish flopping on the ground. It is incredible. 10 for acting. Can, can we get a 10? Let's just imagine there's a 10 here. 10 for acting. Here we have Chris MD once again running things for the YouTube All-Stars, popping it through to Steven Tries, who actually really surprised me with his technicality. It's a lovely ball to batch, but man like Adapt is over dealing with it, and he did really well, like I said, just getting in the way of things. And here he is again, about to pick it off. Cal Freezy, look at this, gets in with a solid tackle, gets back up, gets pushed to the ground by Freezy, who wasn't impressed with that. And then Simon plays a lovely through ball to Lachlan. He's storming for him goal. He's got Vic. Look at the run from Vic. Finds him with the pass just about. It's a little bit behind him. Vic shows Gib to the weights room. And then Rice with a swing and a miss. And Lachlan with a back heel and a miss. And it falls through to Hugh Wizzy. But the effort from those three, you, you can't fault them for it really, can you? Here we have Simon again with another long throw. This time finding me in the box. I'm back on the pitch now. Take it away from Lux. Step back. And try and get it through to Rice. And in this game, like, I wasn't too fussed about scoring. I'll, you'll find out why I, I needed to get at least one goal later on. But I wasn't too fussed about scoring because you guys know that I play football on a regular basis. Many plays football on a regular basis. So, like, it's, it's not new to us. But for some of these guys that haven't stepped on the pitch before and don't know too much about football, like, getting them to get goals would have been the best thing ever. So that's what I was trying to do personally. I think Manny was trying to do it too. So, yeah, I really thought we had a big chance to get Lachlan to score at first. So it got blocked off, so I went for Rice. 
and then he swung and missed. It's a good challenge from Gib. Swung and missed again. And then Manny with the Rabona, but I'm offside at this point. So uh, that move breaks down. He got a lovely pass from Ethan out to Manny. He takes it, pops it over to me first time. I take a little nice touch there, turn around and play through to Simon. And you know Simon's only got one thing in his mind at this point. He's bearing through, has an effort from range, but it's over the bar. Here we've got King Batch keeping it in, preventing the throw in. And I didn't see this in game, but he actually drops Ethan with a little feint there, steps into the box, and look, three men unmarked in the penalty area. All he's got to do is find one of them. And they're all competent shooters as well. It's Ramel, Chris, and DJ Mario. Any of them could put this in the back of the net. All he has to do is find them, but this happens. Oh my gosh. That could have been 2-1 right before half time and made the game so interesting, but it wasn't to be. Then just before half time, Chris stepping away from his man, cutting back with that fake shot like he loves to do, finds DJ Mario and he sends it straight down Charlie Morley's throat. That sounds so mad. Let's keep that in a football context, please. You can see how distraught he is because he knows he should bury that. He knows he's better than that. And I have to give props to DJ Mario as the only Spanish speaker in his side. Like, it can't have been easy for him, but he came over and he had a fantastic time. Thank you so much for coming over, bro. Appreciate you so much. Yeah, that, imagine those two chances. Imagine going in 2-2 at half time. The stage is set for an amazing, intense second half, but it wasn't to be. So looking at the stats at half time, it's been more sidemen than YouTube All-Stars. The shots on target are very similar, but look at our offside. I'm sure a couple of them were Rice and a couple of them were me. But talk Talking of Rice, we have this weird clip of a, a slightly awkward handshake between him and Adapt, and then there's me and Simon discussing whether or not he should shoot from the halfway line. Then we got this random clip of Josh and Jamie being shooters as they see themselves on the big screen, and then Simon attempts the shot. It's not quite the same as uh, St. Mary's, is it? He got Manny battling, taking it away from Deji and uh, Mo Vlogs, finding Simon. Simon trying to hit him with a one-two, but Manny can't take it in his stride. And Simon battles well to get the ball back here, but loses out to King Batch, who actually played defense second half and did a really decent job. And then Movlog's getting that away, and then you see myself pick up the ball with a nice little flick, stepping away from Steven with the left foot touch, and then away from Jay with the right foot touch, then playing across, that was probably the worst touch of the lot. I find Simon, he steps away from Will and E with ease, and it's a good finish. But I told you lot, I didn't want to run in this game, and that's exactly what I ended up doing. Like, it's inevitable, I can't take that out of my game. Found Simon, he steps away from his man nicely. And it's a really good finish, to be fair to him. So 3-0 early on in the second half, and uh, side men were looking good. Now, I've got to leave this in because it's a good clearance by that. but how about this for a touch from Freezy, bringing it down on the chest beautifully. Josh having to applaud that mid-game. And then uh, Chris with a little shoulder drop. Now, look at this run from this little magician. Chris stepping away from Josh there with the little two-touch. And then Joe with a miss, Deji steps away from his man, gets the shot straight at Charlie Morley, and then it goes just wide, nearly an own goal there by Adapt. But Chris, Chris, you were fantastic on this day. If you're watching this, brilliant, brilliant. I need to play a game with Chris on my team, I'm telling you. Like, Wembley Club, we didn't really get to play at the same time. Like, myself and Manny didn't really get to play at the same time. But imagine myself, Chris, Manny, Simon, Charlie, JJ, oh, TGF, oh, it's looking mean. Chuck Theo Baker in the mix. It's nutty. Now here we have Manny with a little bit of skill, flicking it over Jay's head and spinning around, playing it over to Lachlan. He gets a little shove from Steven Tries, but Manny recovers the ball, and then he shows you how to put a left foot cross in. Simon with the next scorpion thing. But look at Keem right here, look at the determination. This is what I'm talking about. And my parents said they loved watching Keem play, like he was the highlight of their game. I know, ouch. No, I'm, I'm messing. They, they said they really enjoyed watching him play. They see me play, obviously. But he put Joe under pressure to win a throw in there. And then it's your boy Simon with the long throw yet again. I take the ball down on the chest. And then there's a little step to try and sell the man, creating a bit of space, finding Simon with a pass. He tries to get it across to Lachlan with a little pass here, but he misses the ball. There's a bit of a mix up, falls out to Harry, and you think he's gonna bang it after all those football challenges, but he can only put it over the bar. And you can see he's a little bit distraught. He's like, what can I do? He's a bit fed up. In the 55th minute, the crowd started with their trademark, we want Vic chant. And so we truly obliged, well, and we had to bring him back on. Lachlan down the field this time, the, and the Vic just, just soaking in the applause. He's ready to get himself a goal. As he steps onto the field, Charlie Morley spots Manny making a little bit of a run and the vision from Charlie is fantastic. He had a fantastic game, like I said, from the goal line. But look at this touch from Manny. Now, if you don't play football and you don't watch football, you might not know how difficult that touch is. But my man's running backwards and he just takes that down so easily. Like, I was, I was shocked when I saw that control. Let's, let's get a replay on that, please. Look at this. 
Running backwards there, bang, controls it beautifully. Steps away from Steven Tries, and then look at this. One, two, bang, through the legs, oh! But then he pushes it too far forward. King Batch makes a good challenge and um, picks up his man. But we do not give up the move. As you see here, Simon's found me with a pass. I pop it into Manny for the one, two. He gets clipped on the edge by Batch. Batch picks him up, they carry on playing. It's a good challenge from Steven Tries here. And then I have to keep this in. I, I can't let the ball go out of play when I know there's a chance of begging. Look at that little hocus pocus, pass Jay. The pass is not very good, but it gets through to Manny anyway. And then Freezy, his studs catching Manny's laces. Like, here's a better angle, here's a crowd angle. You'll see it here better. So Steven with a good challenge. I have to run back, keep the ball on, and then, ready? Bang, bang, hocus pocus. The pass, not very good, but Manny's lace getting caught in Freezy stud. And you see him point to Vic straight away, saying, this is all you, the penalty is all you. Before I show you guys the penalty, I have to leave in this clip because it is my favorite bit of commentary from the entire thing. Fuck's sake, I just want Vic to pull out like a overhead scopian. <laughs> Scoop. Mate, Toby is like Chris MD. I got compared to my footballing hero, Chris MD. I have completed life. So here we have Hugh up to his little tricks, trying to put Vic off and play with the penalty spot and talk to the referee. But you see me walking away from Vic and I've just told him, there's no pressure, just calm down, relax, you got this. You know what you gotta do. Like, whatever happens, happens, just do you. And he was calm and he was composed. And you see, he actually like, resets himself after the initial run up. You'll see it here in a sec. The referee blows the whistle, Vic steps up. He's like, nah, let me compose myself. Steps up again, and then, he brings the house down with a banging penalty. And there's a moment where he's like, wait, I scored. And then he turns around and he's like, wait, I scored. And he realizes it and it hits him. And then we hit him. I try and drag him to the ground. I'm like, yeah, let's bundle him. And he's like, no, 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 up, up, up. You see him pointing, up, up, up. So we just lift him up. And it's a beautiful moment. You get people from both teams appreciating how big a moment this is for Vic in particular. For everyone who's been watching him over the past years, like the improvement this guy has made and the, the effort he put in into preparing for this game, I can't understate it. It's a banging penalty. You sent the keeper the wrong way. <laughs> I'm trying not to smile. I'm trying to just talk to you lot properly. But that is a beautiful clip. It's one of my favorite clips ever. Like, you can't watch this and not smile. Unless you're a dickhead and you just say like, oh, this is cringe. But yeah, that's sick. So it's 4-0 and here we have a fantastic kick from Charlie Morley. I didn't see this touch at the time. That is absolutely brilliant, Simon Minter. Fantastic first touch. And the finish just matches it, lifting it. Into the empty net. I don't know why Hugh was out of out of his goal, but Batch was on the line. Keem is having a laugh at the whole situation. Batch is fed up on the line, and we did the little shoe shine, the shoe shine celebration. That's actually Simon's hat trick. It's a beautiful little finish there over the man on the line. Like, what more can you ask for? Here you got the magician Chris MD playing a lovely through ball to Ramel, and he's put it straight down Charlie Morley's throat. Wait, stop saying that, Toby. He's taken the shot, and it's straight at Charlie Morley. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Then Deji on the follow up, saved by Charlie Morley. He's it straight at him again it's harder to hit Charlie than it is to hit the back of the net and then he puts it wide with his left foot throws his hat and goggles in frustration he knows he's messed up he knows that should have been 5-1 that was his big moment minutes later we have Jay storming for this time turning his man inside and out nicely very nicely getting a good shot off it's a good save by Charlie Morley but Chris MD does not give it up Captain Fantastic stepping away from his man Lachlan and JJ collide and Chris puts it into the bottom corner the goal that his performance definitely deserved. Well played, Chris. And he does the whole thing with a smile on his face as well, despite the result and the frustration that I know he was experiencing. He's, he's got a massive smile on his face, so give him props for that. 67 minutes gone, and I've played the ball down the line to Vic. Look at this guy. Takes the touch, controls it, and then sends Deji to the weights room. Deji, I swear you got a boxing fight, bro. I love you. I love you. I'm not mugging you off, but you cannot be getting weights by Vic. I'm sorry. What? Look, look, look at this. What is this? What is this? Vic and Lachlan are like, what the hell, what are you doing, Dej? Then Lachlan knocks it forward, he's, he's telling Vic to go. Vic, accelerating, nearly gets fouled by Cal. It's a good challenge by Hugh Wizzy. Once again, I don't know why he's off his line, but it happened. Here we have Harry this time, finding myself with a pass. And you'll start to see now that my legs, like I told you, are hitting that point where they get a bit more tired. I'm, I'm running a little bit slower. And here, step away from King Batch after a 1-2 with Ethan, and he recovers well to make a good tackle. Fair play to him there. Once again, Harry finding me with a pass. A minute later, I'm running even slower than I was a minute before. This time I cut it back to Ethan. He lines up the shot, but it's straight at the keeper. Charlie Morley with a massive kick up the field, goes over Bez's head, and I'm running even slower than a minute and two minutes before. This time I'm basically walking. 
I pop it to Ethan, expecting the one-two, but he tries to find, I think, Harry with a pass. Harry held his run nicely, but the cross straight into Hugh Wizzy's arm. It's two minutes later. Your boy is on this left side again, basically walking. This time, taking the ball, trying to switch it to Vic after spotting him in the box. He's held his run, but takes his eye off the ball. But watch how he improves the next time the ball comes to him, okay? Watch closely. This is something that you don't see. So Charlie Morley's gone storming forward with the ball, and uh, I'm sorry that we put you in, in goal again, Charlie, but this is fake. This guy can play with both feet, like one of the best technical footballers on YouTube, and it's a fantastic challenge from Gibb to stop him. And then they play a replay in like the middle of the ball being in play. I don't know what they were doing. So you missed the next bit. The next thing you see, I think, is the ball being controlled by rice gum when they come back to it on stream. You see rice gum running through it on goal. He plays a nice little pass to JJ and JJ finishes beautifully to be fair to him. That is one of the best finishes of the day in my opinion. You can see the joy on Vic's face and you're wondering, why is Vic so happy? What did he do in this move? I'm about to show you. So this is some crowd footage after the breakdown of that move. You see Gibb come in, solid crunching tackle and then Ethan puts Jay under some pressure. Jay gets the ball upfield eventually to Ramel. Ramel sets it back to him because I'm pressing him and then Jay with a bit of a carefree pass, only giving it away to myself. I take control of the ball and I spot Vic, play it over to him. It's a lovely bit of control from Vic. You see that there? And then the second touch to get away from Gibb, Shahan and waits again, plays it through to Rice. And then Rice plays it through to JJ, and then JJ bangs it. It's a fantastic team goal when you think about it. You see myself running over to congratulate them, and I hear Vic shouting, ethnic goal, ethnic goal, and I'm like, all right, relax. Let's relax a little bit. But this all comes from back here. Look at this. The ball goes over to Vic, and then look at this touch. This is what I'm so proud of. That first touch is fantastic for Vic. And then the second touch to get away from the man, and then the left foot pass to play Rice through. You have to give the kid props. So at this stage it's 6-1 and here we have Chris playing the ball forward to Ramel again. Harry chasing back. Ramel gets the shot off. It's a good save by Charlie. Joe Sugg falls over nothing. I'm sorry, Joe. I don't know what happened to you there. Deji actually does really well here to get away from Adapt. Creates some space for himself. Simon and Manny aren't even defending at this point. Morley makes the save and then Joe's nightmare gets a little bit worse as he puts it over the bar from three yards out. Let's not talk about it. I'm not going to make you relive that misery. About three minutes later, we get another fantastic kick up the field from Charlie Morley. And uh, it bounces over Jay, comes to me, I take it on the head, lift it over Jay, and then volley in, um, or half volley in, whatever you want to call it, pass to you, Wizzy. And then I'm gone, you don't, you don't see what happens after that. The cameras don't even follow me run off the pitch, so the next thing you see is me on the touchline with my shot off, and you're like, what's happening, what's going on, and I'm looking for something. Then you get the replays on the screen, and you see it's a little header there, a little flick past the man and then a volley. It's a bit close to the keeper. Could probably have finished that a bit better if I'm being critical of myself. But at the end of the day, I'll take a goal. And like I said earlier, I really wanted to get a goal for one particular reason. Before I say that reason, shout out to the slow-mo cam because it makes the goal look so much better than it is, I think. The next clip you see is myself on the bench looking like I'm injured, which wasn't the case, although my legs were very tired. This right here at the top of your screen is myself and I'm walking along the touchline with a shirt and you can't see what it says from here and you can't see what it says from here either. But I actually had um, a shirt printed which says Manchester on the back and the number 22 and that was uh, to remember the 22 people that lost their lives in the Manchester bombing last year. A lot of you guys might not know this or might not remember this but that bombing took place the day after last year's charity match. And when we put on events like this, you're on a high, like everyone's like, everyone's gasped for like the week or so afterwards. Like you see all the videos in your sub boxes and stuff like that, everyone's celebrating. So we just had that amazing event. Despite the loss, we were also gassed about it. We filled out Charlton Stadium. And then you get the news that you've lost a Sidemen supporter to the senseless act of terror and violence that took place um, the day after. And not just the Sidemen supporter, obviously, like all those people that lost their lives, I was heartbroken for all of them. In particular, there was one girl, Courtney Boyle, and um, Courtney was someone that we'd met on, on a couple of occasions before. I actually donated to her mum's cancer fundraising run um, years back, and I met her mum in Newcastle because she wanted to say thank you to me in person. So I met her mum in Newcastle after the book tour, and I met her at Upload as well. Myself and the guys met her at the book tour and Upload, and then we got that news. And she's one of the people that, like, she was fully active like on my videos, particularly my Walking Dead series. She loved my Walking Dead series and she was in all my live streams. So it's like someone that I recognized a lot. It's, it's like... So with that happening so close after the 
um, after the last charity match, it really affected us all. And I went up, I went up to Newcastle for her funeral, and um, I met all her family and her, her school friends. And it was a hard experience. It was a hard experience. So I thought I'd do this this little gesture to show that we haven't forgotten about them. And even as we're having this like fantastic fundraising occasion for charity, that we still remember those that lost their lives on that night. So. That's why I did that. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for the rest of the video anyway, so I'm gonna end this real quick. Um, thank you to all of you who came down to watch and support us. Thank you um, to those of you who donated, who watched from home, to all of you who helped in the running of the event, from the people organizing right down to the stewards and the staff that help cater for everyone. I thank you so much for helping us put on yet another fantastic event. Forever grateful to you lot. And yeah, that's the last Sidemen FC versus YouTube All-Stars charity match. So I hope you lot have enjoyed this video and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here now. I'll talk to you in a bizzle. Peace.